Okay, now we're moving on to chapter 27. Chapter 26 was mainly about current and voltage and resistance. <clears throat> Here for chapter 27, now we're getting into circuits. First packet is going to be about um, resistor circuits and multiple batteries and stuff like that. We're assuming that simple resistor circuits you already know. So if you need to review that, review that um, you should do that. Resistor is the load, right? It's another word for that. Um, capacitors, we've studied. Battery, again, oh, these are all, this is just review. Some of the different symbols that we use for resistors and batteries and that sort of thing. Okay, just checking that the uh, microphone is working appropriately. Okay, and so um, again, resistors in series, the equivalent resistance, you add them up. Resistors in parallel, equivalent resistance you get by doing the flip, add, and then flip. Um, and so there's a summary of capacitors and resistors in series, uh, in parallel, you know, the current, the charge, all that stuff. Okay, ideal EMF. An EMF, an ideal battery, has zero uh, internal resistance. Most batteries do have internal re resistance, though. And so what, what you'll sometimes see is that next to the battery in the circuit, there's a little R right next to the battery. And uh, sometimes there's even a box around both of them together. They're telling you that's the internal resistance of the battery. Um, and so um, that's, that's, I mean, that's really what you need to, what you need to know there. Um, okay, EMF devices. Um, EMF devices like batteries, they do work on charge carriers. They do work on... Um, you know, electrons, because electrons are the things that are going to be moving. They push them through a circuit, right? Or they push them to a certain point, like in a, a capacitor circuit. They push them until they're, you know, collected on the capacitor plates, something like that. And so, you know, how do we analyze a circuit? All these things. Kirchhoff's laws. One, the loop rule. That is, when you go through any loop, all the voltage should add up to zero. And then the junction rule. Going into and out of any junction, the current has to be the same. And we're going to be really putting that to the test here uh, with, with these problems that you're going to see. Okay, so there's a summary here of how, how to use Kirchhoff's laws. And so um, when you have multiple batteries, you sort of pick what you think the current is. And then you write equations for each of the loops. And you write equations for the junctions. Right? Um, if there are only two loops, there's only one real junction that you can use. If you write the equation for the other junction, it turns out to be the same equation. Um, and so there's there's a little bit of a uh, an example here. And it says write the loop rule equation for this circuit, right? So it's just a real simple circuit. Let's take a look. Okay. So when I'm doing this loop, I'm going to go around in the same direction as the current. That was a messy resistor. But if I go around this way, right, going through the battery this way, I'm adding up that EMF, right? So it's plus that EMF. And then now, since I'm going in the direction here, right, so this is plus minus, I'm losing potential. This is plus, this is minus side. So I'm losing potential here, so I'm going to lose this I, right? I can be lowercase or capital. Usually lowercase is a changing current, but we can do, we can do it either way. Um, times little r. And then here, going from plus to minus, I'm losing potential again. So minus, same current though, times big R. And that's it. So then to find the current, uh, this all equals zero. To find the current, then I solve for i. So i is going to end up being um, EMF over little r plus big R. Okay, and I plug in my numbers. This ends up being 10 and 4. So it's two and a half amps. Right, you see that? Yeah. All right, and then now for this one, this is where things start getting a little bit tricky. Uh, in example two, because now we have two batteries. So how does this work? This uh, graph. So, or, no, the graph is, so this is 2.1 volts, and this is 4.4 .4 volts, 
We can get that from the graph. That's a potential drop from one to the other. Let's, let's just say for a minute that you didn't know that that was the direction of the current. So you pick a direction. I mean, naturally, this is more so you think the current's going to be going that way. But let's just say counterclockwise is our direction for the current. Okay. And then we fill in. This is, uh, this one's 4 ohms. This one is 1 ohm. This one here, R1, is 1.5 one ohms. All right, 1.5. Okay, so if I'm going around this way, um, here's how this works. If I think the current's going this way, let me start, uh, start here at A. If I go backwards across a battery, that's actually a minus. I'm subtracting the voltage from that battery. And then as I'm going across here, since I think that's the direction, now I'm going to also be subtracting 1.5 times I, right? That's the voltage being used up by that. Uh, here, the voltage being used up by this is 4I, and then the voltage being used up by this one is 1I. And now I'm going the correct way across the battery, right? Negative to positive up. I'm adding potential going this way. So plus 2.1 equals zero. Okay, and now all I have to do is solve for I. Um, and so this ends up looking like um, negative 2.3 volts plus I times uh, 6.5 or negative, what does this end up being? Negative 6.5. And then when I solve this for I, this ends up being 2.3, or positive 2.3, right, because you add it over negative 6.5. And we end up with this um, negative 0 0.35 amps. What does the negative mean? The negative means we picked the wrong direction for the current. Um, but this is the magnitude of the current. So that means that the current here is really this 0 0.35. Next is example 3. Um, and in example three, this is like the capacitor monster maze problem that we had, um, except this time it's the resistance monster maze. And so we've got all, all the batteries are four volts, all the resistors are four ohms. And so you're just looking, can you find a path that goes through one battery and one resistor, um, or, um, you know, two batteries or only batteries and one resistor. And, uh, it turns out that uh, that you can, right? And hold up, it looks like this. That's the path that you have to take. And you'll see that you are only, only going through batteries and then through that one resistor. And you pick the direction for the current you think it's going. And so you're adding and subtracting all the batteries, whether you're going negative to positive or positive to negative, through that battery. Um, and all those voltages plus 4I equals uh, zero. And then you can solve it, and you get that. Right. Okay, so here's where things get interesting, because now we've got two batteries, and we've got two loops, or two circuits, actually three loops, right? One, two, and three. And so what we're going to have to do now, uh, so how many currents do we have? We've got one current in this wire, so we'll call this uh, I1, we'll call this I2, and we'll call this I3. I'm going to assume that the current is going this way because this voltage is more than this voltage. So I'm doing something like this. And so as a result here, I1 is equal to I, uh, I2 plus I3. Right. But I'm going to rewrite this as negative I1 plus I2 plus I3 equals zero. All right. And what I'm trying to do is I'm going to write three equations where I have I's here and then over here on this side, uh, something else. So now let's take a look at the junction or the loop rule. And let me take, uh, let's see, this loop here is going to be one to use. So starting from here, I'm going, I got 12 volts and I'm subtracting, I'm going this way across this resistor. And so minus, right, this is plus minus, it's a potential drop. So minus five times I1. Okay, and then this way, so this is 10 times I3 equals zero. 
Now again, I'm going to rewrite this with coefficients of the i's. So uh, this will be 5i1 plus 0i2 plus 10i3 equals 12. And I can make it all positive because this comes over here and is negative, so I make the whole thing positive. That's my next equation. Okay, now I'm going to write an equation for going all the way around this thing. So starting here again, I've got 12 volts minus uh, 5i1 minus 5i2 minus 8 volts because I'm going this way, right, the, on the wrong side. So this is plus minus. This is a potential drop going from positive to negative. And so uh, equals 0. So I subtract that 8. This 12 and 8 is negative 4, so I bring that over to that side. Um, so I've got 5i1 um, plus 5i2 plus 0i3 equals 4. Okay, and so now I've got three equations and three unknowns. And there are multiple ways of, of solving this. Uh, you could do substitution or, you know, uh, subbing things in in different places, and that takes a little while. Or you can do a matrix. And that's what I'm going to show you now, just the, the process. Um, and for your information, on the next page, after example 7, there are instructions there for how to do a matrix in your TI calculator. Um, but let me, let me write it out this way. And what I'm doing is I'm just writing these coefficients. So this is like negative 1, 1, 1, 0. Uh, let me put this one here. So this is 5, 5, 0, 4. And this one is 5, 0, 10, 12. And in case you forgot how this works, the idea is I am multiplying this by something so that when I add it here, I can eliminate. And so I just want to end up with a diagonal here, right? So I want to eliminate this 5. And these two are the same, so I could do this in one fell swoop, right? So this is, I'll make this negative 5, 5, 5, and then 5 times 0 is just 0, right? So then over here, my next... I can leave the top, and then adding this, negative 5 and 5 is 0, 5 and 5 is 10, 5 and 0 is 0, or sorry, uh, 5, of course, uh, and then that's still 4. Adding negative 5 and 5 is 0, 5 and 0 is 5, 5 and 10 is 15, and then that's 12. Good. So now I've got zeros here. Now I want to get a 0 here. So I'm going to divide by 10. And I'm going to subtract. Okay, so I've got negative 1, and then this is negative 1, so that's 0. This is negative 1 half, plus that makes it positive 1 half. And this is negative 0.4, so this becomes negative 0.4 here. Uh, this remains the same. Uh, this is positive 10. 0, 5. 15 and 12. So I want to go this way now. So I'm going to take this and divide by 2 and multiply uh, by negative 1. So this and that. So the top is still the same. And then this is still 0, 10, 5, and 4. So now this plus this, this is negative 5. So this is 0. This is uh, negative 2 and a half, so this becomes 12 and a half. And this is negative 2 plus that, so that's 10. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to replace this, make this 25 and 20, and then I'm like, hey, that, you know, I can just replace this with 5 and 4. Right. Okay, so now I want to get rid of this and these things. So um, if I just multiply this by negative 1, and then add that, then these go away. And so my new matrix is this. This is 10, 0, 0. This is interesting. And then 0, 0, 5, 4. Again, now I can multiply this by negative uh, 1 tenth. So negative over 10, negative over 10. I add these. This goes away, so I'm left with negative 1, 0, 0, and negative 0.8. 0, 10, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 5, and 4.
Okay, and now <clears throat> let's take a look at what this means. This means negative I1 equals negative 0 0.8. So I1 then is 0 0.8 amps. What's that? This equation is saying that 10 times I2 equals 0. Okay, so that means that I2 has got to be 0 amps. This equation, that's the coefficient of I3, so 5I3 equals, zero point, or, uh, equals 4, jumping ahead of myself here, 4, so that means I3 is equal to 0.8. Okay, and if we look at our circuit, that makes sense. It works with the, with the junction rule. Okay, and so, I mean, all the, this was a lot of math, a lot of just matrix solving. Um, the physics is really in setting up the equations in the beginning. Okay, and so here now we've got uh, this current. I'm going to assume there's current going uh, this way, actually, because right, this is... Um, actually, I'm going to assume current's going this way. So I'm going to call this I3, and I think there's current going this way, so I'm going to call this um, I1. And this one here I had made I2. Okay, and so looking at this junction, um, I1 is equal to I2 plus I3, all right? Two and three are coming in here, and then I1 is going out that way. So I've got um, negative I1 plus I2 plus I3 equals zero. Okay, and then um, I'm going to take a loop. Let's see, I can go around this loop here. All right, and so what I've got here is plus 6, plus 8, minus 12, right, because I'm going this way, that way, that way, and then backwards across the 12, so plus 6, plus 8, minus 12, gives me uh, a 4 volt uh, potential difference, ultimately, and then minus 5 I2 equals 0. And so this is um, 0 I1 minus 5 I2 We'll make this plus. Um, plus 0 I3 equals negative 4. All right, so here's my next equation. And then I've got a nice little uh, loop right here, so I'm going to do this. This is 8 volts equals, or uh, minus, let me just write minus 10 I3 equals 0. And so this is 0 I1 plus uh, 0 I2, say plus 10 I3 equals 8. Three equations, three and, and there are other equations you could set up. I mean, this one's got to be the same, but you could even take like this loop if you went around this way. Just be careful if you're going across the, um, in the opposite direction of the current, then you've got to actually add, because what we're saying here is this is plus minus. Going from the negative to the positive side of a resistor, the potential difference, you've got to add that. All right, and um, I mean, if you want to see the matrix, I can show you later, um, or how to solve it that way, but solve it one way or another. And the answer you should get is that I1 is 0.8 amps, I2 is 0.4 amps, and then I3 is 1.2 amps. Okay. There's another question here. It's what's the potential difference between points A and points B? Well, this one is actually easy. Just from here to here, it's a difference of 14 volts. Right? So, um, delta V from A to B is potential difference of 14 volts. All right, so again, we've got this set up. Um, I called this I1. I predicted I3 was going this way, because this is like, you know, 12 and 8 here. I figured that would probably overpower that one. Um, but this one would overpower this one, so I think this current is going to go this way. So I called this I2. Right. And again, there are different equations you can set up. The junction rule equation is going to, again, be like I1 plus I2, sorry, uh, I1 equals I2 plus I3. Um, 
<clears throat> let's take uh, this loop, this big outside loop, and take a look at how that would work. If I start here, I'm adding 12 volts right away. So 12 volts. And then I'm subtracting uh, 10 I1. And then I'm still in the direction of the current here. So this is minus 10 I3 minus 6 volts minus 10 I3 again. And this way, uh, and then I'm going this way, 10 uh, minus 10 I1, all of that equals zero. All right, so part of what we're going to do here is look at simplifying this whole thing. You know, so you got to simplify and get combine uh, like terms. And I think what you end up with here then is negative 20 I1 minus 20 I2. Uh, this would be plus zero I3, of course, equals six, all right, 12 and six negative. Uh, so let's make it all positive because you would subtract the six over there. And so that's your next equation. And let's write an equation for this actually. Let's go this way so you can see how this works. So I'm going backwards across this resistor so you can see that. So let me start here. So right away this is um, minus 10 I3 minus 6 volts minus 10 I3 Let's go in this way, and then plus 8 volts. And now, since I'm predicting the current, if the current's going this way, then uh, this is the plus and that's the minus side of this resistor. But now I'm going from negative to positive side of the resistor. So this will be plus, plus 5I2 equals 0. All right, so this, the total voltage here is 2, All right, so 2 volts minus 20 I3 plus 5 I2 is 0. Okay, so this is going to be 0 I1 um, plus 5 I2 minus 20 I3 equals negative 2 volts. And that's, that's your next equation. But again, you could, you could do an equation for this one as well. Uh, but I wanted to show you this, what it's like going backwards through uh, a resistor if you're going the opposite direction of the current. One way or another when you get to the end here I1 and this one is gets pretty messy if you're trying to do this by hand I1 turns out to be 31 over 60 I2 turns out to be one-third and I3 turns out to be 11 over 60. All right. So these are the answers to this problem. And then from that, you can find the potential difference between here and here. Yeah. It's going to be 8 volts plus uh, one third of 5. All right, so I guess 8.6 volts, something like that. All right, we'll try this one more time. Uh, the first time I did this, I hadn't plugged in the microphone, so the sound was... Um, not working, and then I just did this whole explanation again without turning on the camera. It looks like it's on now. Let's try this again. So here's number seven, and this should look familiar. We did this with the capacitors, but now the adding should be a little bit more natural, right? These two in series, that's two ohms, but then the two in parallel with the two is one, but then now the one in parallel with in series with the one gives me two ohms, etc. And we're just adding up. So it's like two, one, two, one, two, one, all the way until we get to this point, the entire equivalent resistance is two ohms. Okay, so I is V over R. So 6.4 divided by two gives me 3.2 amps. That's how much current is going through this resistor. And now the current splits. It splits and it's even on both of these, right? Um, we could say, okay, it's 3.2 amps going through this whole thing. And so we could figure out what the potential difference is across this whole thing, right, and then divide by divide by two, or divide by the uh, <clears throat> current here, the resistance here and there, and so you get 1.6, really just gets cut in half, and then so it's 1.6, and then it gets cut in half again, and again, and again, and again, so that it's, the current keeps getting cut in half all the way down until it's 0.1 ohms, or 0.1 amps in these last three 
uh, resistors. Okay, um, and I think that's that's it for <clears throat> number seven. The next page, the next slide is instructions for finding or solving matrices using your calculator. And 27.8 is the problem with using meters. Anytime we use a meter, we are doing something to the circuit. And anytime we change the circuit, um, or anytime we add something to the circuit, we're changing it. So how do we reduce that as much as possible, the change, and yet still get an accurate reading? When we're measuring potential uh, of, with a voltmeter or a multimeter, which does everything, um, the multimeter or the voltmeter is placed in parallel. It's placed in parallel um, because of Kirchhoff's loop rule. And what we do is we have a very high resistance in the voltmeter so that most of the current is still going through the circuit. Okay, but current, current has to be measured in series. You have to break the circuit and put the meter into the circuit. But you still want most of the current going through the way it was before. And you want the meter to act as much like a wire as possible, so very low resistance. Um, and then an ohmmeter measures resistance of an element. One way to measure resistance is using the Wheatstone bridge. We have, it's made of four resistors, one, three, R1 and R3 are known. R2 is a potentiometer, or also known as a variable resistor. And um, what you do is you can change the resistance on it using a dial or something like that. And that can be used to measure Rx, because you change the dial, you change the resistance on one until you get a zero reading on the voltmeter. And then you can use this formula, right? R1 times Rx um, is R2 times R3, kind of like the formula that we come up with before with the capacitors. Okay, and that's it for this chapter 27 packet.